Okay. Tony Russo, welcome to the John Riley Project fabulous podcast studio, and it's great to have you here. How are you doing? Good. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Okay. So you're a city council candidate for the at-large district. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. It is very exciting. How's the uh, campaign going so far? So far, so good. I've had uh, a very good reaction um, from the friends and family that I've... uh, uh, Actually, I've lived here 40 years, so I've had a lot of people that know me you right. know, from, from the restaurants and from school, uh, the people that stayed here and, let, you know, that didn't uh, go elsewhere. <laughs> so we, yeah. we've, we've been, uh, it's been a good, it's been a good little run. You're a popular guy. I mean, I, we've, everyone's known you from O'Harley's, at least I have. Mm-hmm. And I know you, you went to Poway High, mm-hmm. so you know a lot of folks in town. Yep. I was on your Facebook page. You have over 1,900 friends. Yeah, I think it's actually about 3,200 now. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot of guys. Yeah. So that's good in your campaign. You're, yeah. you're well-known. You're well-liked. So yeah. you got to like that, right? Yeah, I do like that. And you know what? Um, the friendship is what uh, I cherish the most. I mean, obviously, you, you know, not all of them are going to probably be close friends, but they're, they're people that know me. And a lot of times they would sit there and they, they'll call me up. They'll, if they need something, I'm, I'm there. Right on. Yeah. I, that's, that's how my mom taught me. Oh, your mom. You've spoken about a lot about your mom. I think you spoke of her in the, in the candidate forum last week. You've, you've spoken of her on your Facebook page. She's, she's very special. Very much so, John. Yeah. Um, I don't want to cry, but, uh. She was my life. You know, I took care of her the last um, five years and the last six months. My mom used to go to the restaurant daily, 7.30 in the morning, stay there till 10.30. Wow. People used to think that I'd have a, a, a ball and chain on her. It's like, why are you, you know, leaving a 60-year-old woman, 60-plus-year-old woman at the restaurant? And I used to tell them she didn't want to leave. She loved the people. She loved the people of Poway. She loved it when she had someone that she could sit there and make smile. And that was her. Like she would sit in a chair, sometimes talk to people for an hour at a time. Um, so it was uh, it was really a great loss when I lost my mom. She, she died of cancer. And uh, I did everything I could. <laughs> sometimes I look back and wonder if I could have done more, but... Wow. Um, you know, she's up there. She's she's looking down and and uh, hopefully helping me. <laughs> I think she is. I you know. Uh, I remember being with my family at O'Harley's, and you and I didn't know each other, but I knew who you were because, right. like, oh yeah, there's Tony, right? You know, and you were working behind the bar. Yeah, behind the bar, the rest, uh, the uh, kitchen. Uh, yeah. Kind of, when when you're a restaurant owner, you, you have you to do know everything from yeah. washing dishes to to sweeping, to mopping, to cooking, to cleaning. You have to have jack of all trade, basically. Right. You were hustling, you know, yeah. and, and I mean that in a very positive way. So, Thank you. Um, so I remember specifically being there, and a lot of the recipes in the menu, you spoke about your mother. Like she had certain dishes that were her signature dishes. 90% of that menu, and even the one that we carried on to the second restaurant that I was part of, were my mother's authentic restaurants straight from Italy. My mother and father were obviously both born and raised in Italy. Um, you know, you hear about people coming on the boat. Right. She was, a, she was one of the last ones that came here on, on the boat. That's, she, uh, that's great. Yeah, she came, uh, they went to Connecticut. My dad uh, got 10 brothers and sisters. My mom has uh, nine brothers and sisters. Most of them have passed. And, you know, obviously for them being the youngest, um, it, it, it's, uh, we had a big family. When right. I, yeah, when I was born in Connecticut and we used to sit there and, and um, have some happy Sundays because that's when we all got yeah. together, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and it was 30, 40 people and, and we used to have sauce and wine and the kids get all the cousins. And if I probably count all the cousins that I have out right now, we're, we're talking in the hundreds. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> oh, yeah. easy. Huge it, family easy, tree. Easy. I went to a wedding in, in England and we took a picture. We had to take two separate pictures of our cousins because we had so many people, cousins there. <laughs> they took the guys and one and the girls and another one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all you said your parents had not your mother had nine siblings. Yeah. So yeah, that family tree is wide and deep. Very wide. Yeah. 
Um, most of my dad, uh, my mom's siblings, uh, stayed back in, 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 uh, in Italy. Um, she had, you know, obviously some cousins that, that came to America. Um, most of my father's actually came to Connecticut. Um, you know, brothers, I think he had the two brothers and three sisters that actually came to uh, Connecticut. The rest of them went to, uh, England and he has right now, uh, one brother just passed away. He's got uh, a brother and sister um, pretty much left. Right. Yeah. Time uh, time goes by flat fast, and it's you, uh, you, you forget how things were in the old days. I think that's one re- thing that uh, society today um, forgets about, you know, with the computer and the technology and... and um, go, 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 and then having it right at your, your, your fingertip, the answers, you forget the interaction that uh, you have. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. There is no question. I mean, yeah. we all are, like, zoning in on our phones, yeah. and we're slaves of the technology yeah. to a degree. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, you know, you're out there campaigning. You know, you're you're active online in your campaign, but... You're going to be active out there, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, the whole thing, right? Sure am. <laughs> I sure am. I've got my, uh, I, I've got my, my plan, um, slowly but surely. You know, I, I, like you said, a lot of people know me. Um, I'm going to go around, and you know, the number one thing is interacting with people. No question. You, you can put posters up. You, you can sit, you know, call them on the phone. Helps. But how many phone calls can you make a day? Yeah. Um, most people work during the daytime. Right. Uh, you know, at nighttime, you have to also take in consideration. They come home, they're tired, they want to have dinner, so you have to give them the respect of the fact that they have a family. You don't want to knock on the door during dinner time. I've had a few of that happen. But, sure. you, know, you know, you apologize and, and you yeah. hope to sit, sit where you can come back and, and, and talk to them. And there's some people that, you know, they, they uh, are voting for certain people and they don't want to talk to you. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's reasonable. But there's a whole lot of people that haven't made up their mind. No. There's a whole lot of people that don't know the other two candidates that you're running against. Mm-hmm. And so if you have an opportunity to get in front of people, you know, hopefully you can sway them your way. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm one of those um, type of person that even if they don't want to vote for me, I'd like to sit there and talk to them and, and just have a, a, a conversation. Yeah. yeah. It, it's one of the, you know, I, I, I'll give you a quick example. I went to Walmart the other day and I drove the little cart around. I had my three little kids and I put on a tiger, which is going to come into play when, when with the campaign. Okay. And um, I must have had, not exaggerating, 15 to 20 little kids come up to me and say, can I touch you, Mr. Tiger? And, and <laughs> it was, you know, it, it's, my mom loved kids. I love kids. I've got three of my own two stepkids, ch- children, you know, they're, they're older, but, um, it, it, uh, it brings you a sense of family when, when you especially see little kids that, that, uh, they're innocent. And when they're, you know, they don't know what's going around in the world. They don't know what's happening. Uh, all they know is that they uh, love mom and dad and they love characters. And uh, they want to just sit there and, and be part of that. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, you, you connect with, you know, all kinds of people when you're going around town, right? Yeah, you're, I do. You're at Walmart. You're at the grocery store. You're at Target. You know, <laughs> you get to know people. So I was just, while you were talking, I kind of put two and two together. It was like Tony, Tiger. <laughs> you, you got it. You got it. You got it. It was kind of my, kind of my, I gave a little hint on, and on the last little debate we had, the little forum yeah. that remember T. Okay. So that's what that, that was. That's what it was. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't for anything else, but it was that. So we've got our, we've got kind of a, a, a plan where, you know, you can't forget it. Okay. So I wasn't sure you were going, Mr. T, you know, it's got a lot of angles, right? True, it was. It's you know? a little th- and I don't mind I don't mind giving it up. It's, 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 right. it's uh and again, it's not Tony the Tiger, like we're we're the tiger that's eating the cereal. Yeah. But it's um, you know, an accolade to 
the, good. the tiger, and and uh, and it's going to be fun. So good. We have something to look forward to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And on the campaign, to have a little bit of fun as we go, and you know, something something memorable and ways to yeah, ways to memory. Uh, John, that, memory that, you. That, I mean, honestly, that's what it's about. I mean, yes. I know we, the politics is politics, but we, as a community, have to understand that. We have to work together, and sometimes you have to have that smile and laugh. Sometimes you have to sit there and and, and disagree, you know, together. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it can't be always my way, um, because if it is, then why run for city council? If it's just going to be you know, unanimous, always the three people that are on there, um, that they were always work together, you're, you're basically just taking a seat and taking the money from the city and, and going there twice a month. Right. Um, you're not listening to the people what they want. Right. You know, the number one thing that I probably have learned from a lot of businessmen that I know, and these guys are real estate developers and they've been business owners in Poway like, like myself, but they've, um, they're seasoned. And when I say that, they're 70, 80 years old. And one thing they mentioned is that you listen. And when you listen to what people want, if you can do it, you make a 100%, 150% effort to try to get it done. Sometimes you can't, John. Sometimes it, oh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 mm-hmm. <sighs> we have to grow. <laughs> we have to bring people in here. Um, we can't. We can complain and, and, and say, we you know, how are we going to sustain it? But there's got to be a way that we can work together to do it. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, there, and, e- and even if we can maybe disagree on some of the issues, hopefully there's ways that we can come together and find that common ground, right? And that's the key. Yeah, exactly. That's the key. But the whole notion of listening is, is you know, the great... Uh, I remember someone told me this. They say you have two ears and one mouth and you should use them proportionately. And uh, that always stuck with me. But I think for um, elected officials, yeah, you are representing the people. Right. And, you know, you certainly have your own opinions and views on particular issues. But in the end, you're a representative, right? Right. So you have uh, to listen. I, um, you know, people have asked me what uh, my platform is when they first started. And... I looked at him straight in the eye and I said, it's, I don't have the platform for me. The platform is yours. If you don't tell me what you need or what your disagreements are in your community, how can I relate that to the city council or, or right. other departments of, of, the, of the city? Um, it's not just the city council that we, we, we work together. You're talking about parks and recreation. You're talking about the water district. You're talking, you know, about safety. So it, there's a lot of puzzle pieces of the puzzle that come into play. And again, back to what I was saying before, if it's only three people or possibly four that make that decision on where the, pu- the pieces of puzzles go, it, 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 you're never going to get it. It'll get done, but done the way they want to get it done. Right. So, so that, that's that's the tough part. So when you're out there listening to the people, what are they telling you that they want? What are their issues? <sighs> the biggest issue right now is the 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 traffic on Poway Road. Um. The they're worried about all of the businesses that the, that the city have said that they're going to bring in. Um, John, you're in real estate. You, you know that you have to be sustainable to, to do it. And, and um, if you don't bring people in, which I know a lot of the candidates kind of had that. And even myself had that, you know, uh, you can't stuff 10 pounds of oranges in a five pound bag, but you have to bring the people in slowly, but surely. Right. And once you do that, then we can sit there and, and start, you know, opening up businesses. So, so they're sustainable. Um, one of my biggest fears, and I think one of the biggest fears that, that a lot of, uh, uh, of the people of Poway is, is that if you drive down Poway road, doesn't matter if it's noon, two o'clock, 
or 10 o'clock, it's bumper to bumper traffic. Yeah, it, it can be pretty bad at times, yeah. I, John, I live at, you know, right now I'm taking care of my father, he had a stroke. Um, I left and literally it took me 30 minutes, 35 minutes to go from Garden Road area to where we are here by Sprouts. And it used to take five to 10 minutes max. Yeah. That, so, that can e- easily be a 20 minute drive. Right. I mean, the, the Twin Peaks Pomerado intersection is just a oh, tough one. It's, it's disaster. You yeah. go at five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You're it's, not, I mean, and it's, it's, sad. It, it's sad because, you, you know, there's ways to improve it. Um, and again, those roads were built years ago, not knowing we were going to get as big as we are now. Right. Um, Remember when I came 40 years ago, <laughs> we had, we had what, I think we had Alpha Beta, Big Bear, um, and these are grocery stores, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Um, we had a trailer park on Powie Road, and uh, I think one or two lights. And in the post office was uh, uh, just a little where they, um, on the corner of uh, Hillary and uh, Midland Road, where they used to have the Walmart now took. Okay. Bought it out. Okay. And it was a it was a small post office, you know. You knew everybody. Right. You knew everybody. I mean, we I went to school, you know, we talk about school buses. Yeah. <laughs> I probably wasn't the best of, of, of angels in school. I had great grades. <laughs> but I probably wasn't I was you know, I like to push to to get an answer. Yeah. Or yeah. to find out why, basically. Right. And there was many times that I sat there and, and had to be disciplined where I had to walk to school. My dad was the type of guy is that he, you know what? If you got a note from the teacher home, sorry, son, you're, you're walking to school now. And he, yeah. that was not the punishment, but that was to make me understand that you, you have to have consequences for your reaction, for, for what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I learned, I learned. Now I don't do that to my kids in a sense, but I try mm-hmm. to make them understand. Obviously every generation changes. Um, I mentioned to you earlier before, one of the, the toughest things right now, even with my kids, that I have a, the, the youngest is a four-year-old, is the iPad, the iPods. They're, they're hard to, to say no when they're watching them and um, I know it's I know it's the future, but how do we sit there and curb it to the point where it's going to sit there and have it benefit our children? Yeah, I think as a society we're trying to figure that out because I think we're all learning that there's an addictive quality to it. Um, at the on the other hand, we we understand the power and the access to information it gives us. I mean, we're all walking around with a computer in our pocket and we can just, you know, Google anything and we get an answer like that. Um, but for a child, yeah, it's an issue. And they talk about it in the school school district. You know, do they want to have more iPads in the classroom? There are some people, some parents that are concerned about, you know, the strain on the eyes. and Very much so. You know, so it, it, we're going to learn as we go through this. You know, we, we've only been dealing with these devices now for Less than 20 years, really. Yeah. yeah. I, I, when I went to, to high school, we just started with the computer lab. We had apples. I right. remember Apple One, Two, and I actually got one of the original apples still at my home. Oh, right. And right. yeah. And, um, it's a museum piece. Yeah. And, you know, back then, you, you, you know, it was, it was coming out. Um, one thing, you know, obviously I've been pounding the pavement, talking to people. Um, my kids go to Chaparral. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty active with the teachers there and, 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 you know, with the principals and vice principals. And I want to make sure my kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, you know, and acting and behaving and, mm-hmm. and interacting with other kids. And, and thank God they're very sociable. Um, I they guess get that from I, your guess, dad. I guess they get that from my dad. <laughs> right, from the dad. <laughs> no, mom's sociable, but mom, you know, with three kids, mom takes. Um, she's got a lot of work, and yeah. and you know, uh, if it wasn't for her, it, it, I don't know what I do. You know, the the mom takes. Um, I understand how how people 
yeah, they should get paid, but <laughs> it, it's tough. Hey, that's and a that's a big time job, especially when you got three little ones oh. and one by one. I, yeah. I I remember they, they when they started singing, <laughs> it was you know they started crying. It was like wow. How old are your children? <laughs> I have a four year old that just turned four. By the way, on my mom's birthday. Very nice. Um, so that's uh, very special to me. I have, and his name is Luca Bear, and we were talking about the uh, the eye problems, and you know he's got a very bad stigmatism huh. for his age. Okay, and um, that's how I found out where he had that stigmatism because he was looking at the iPad and he had it very close to his eye. Mm -hmm. Because the doctor asked me, "What made you think of bringing him in, in at two years old?" Most people wouldn't do that, and I and I noticed that, and you know, thank God that if you catch it earlier, you know, you obviously have a better chance of whatever it may be if there's a problem. Um, but again, technology, 10 years from now, is gonna be completely different than it is today to you know, take care of kids' eyes or anything. Well, it'll maybe. keep improving and yes. it'll keep protecting yes. protecting us and yes. they'll figure it out as they go. Yeah, he, uh, he is my, um, if I could say boxer, he's the boxer. He's giving grandpa two black eyes. <laughs> Literally <laughs> black eyes. Four years old. Oh, yeah. He, he's got in, <laughs> he, he's broken two windows in the house. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Baseballs. He, he throws a baseball like a, a champ. I, Randy Jones, one of my good friends. And, and uh, if he wasn't going through what he's going through, I'd, I'd probably ask Randy to sit there and, and uh, you know, teach him the fundamentals, even at four years old. Well, and, and even my five year old that just turned uh, five in, in January, they both got arms. Well, good, and Randy can teach him a sinker, yeah, right? Yeah. Get some Randy, infield Randy's, rounders, Randy's right? a great guy. Yeah, um, he's terrific. He, yeah, he's gone through some tough times, but he's getting better. Does he still live in Poway? Uh, no, he actually lives in Escondido. Okay. Um, otherwise, I'd actually have him promoting stuff for me, but Randy, he's, um, you couldn't ask for a better guy. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he um, yeah. he gives his heart, you know, so, um, you know, like anything, everybody goes through tough times. Sure. Um, I've always said that uh, until you walk in that person's shoes, you don't know what they're going through. No, and, you don't. And you know, one one of the main things, John, is that you know, P, you know, you hear things and you know, through social media, you hear, oh, you know, Tony this, Tony, that. but people don't, you know, those people don't really know me as a person. Um, they think, oh, he did this or he did that, but you know, I use, uh, my answer to all of them, until you walk my shoes, you can't judge me. You know, you can judge me all you want, say, oh, he, you know, he, he's loud or he, you know, he doesn't take care of people. No, that's not true. Um, my heart, if I got my last $5, I'll give it to somebody on the side of the street. That's the type of person I am. Um, my wife, the fiance, she, uh, Oh, he says, Tony, well, he, I, see, I said, baby, he needs it but more than I do. I've got shoes. I've got a shirt. He, mm -hmm. And if he doesn't use it to help himself, I did what I thought was right. Right. Well, you just got to go based on your own values, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's what you believe, and you do that. That's that's where my mom came in. And, yeah. uh, and not to say my dad didn't, but my mom was, um, if I could say a saint... And I know you have to sit there and be uh, made a sainthood by the Pope. She was the closest thing to a saint. She would sit, I'm telling you, John, she would sit down. It doesn't matter if you call her a name or whatever it is. She would sit down with you and she would try to tell you, especially people that maybe drank a little too much, she would sit there and make sure that they didn't go home. Um, she she was worried as their, their it was their own son or daughter. Um, everybody called her mama. Everybody called her mama. You, um, where's mama at today? You know, and she used to go on Monday and she'd like to go to her, do her little casino thing with the girls and all oh, that. Yeah. And then if she wasn't there, where's mama at? You know, I want mama to <laughs> keep, cook the, uh, the mushrooms and yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, mama, mama was a, uh, a fixture. I wish I could have her back, but you know, I know she's looking down and, and, and the kids and, and then uh, she's your campaign manager. Yeah, she and, is. And I'll, I'll tell you this: um, she didn't get uh, she didn't get a chance to see any of my my kids. Um, Stella, which I named after my mom, Stella Maria Antoinette. Um, she was born six months after my mom passed away. And I'll tell you this, John: 
if it wasn't for her, I couldn't tell you where I would be today in a sense of mentally and, and you know, when you lose when you lose a mom that you're very close with and then you, you've you lived with for the last, obviously lived for five years and then six months of taking care of her, you see things and you realize things that that really aren't important. You know, oh, you, it gets real. Yeah, yeah it real <laughs> is real because mm-hmm. I, 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 the hardest part for me was when I used to sit there and, and, and go home was knowing that my mom would lay down in bed and knowing that you only had a certain amount of time left. And it was no if, and, or buts. Yeah. You but might the, have the doctors mu- you have a clock. Yeah, you have a month or yeah. you may have six. Yeah. Now, you and I, we don't know until the good Lord pulls our number. Mm-hmm. But with my mother, her number was pulled. It's just a matter of if it's going to be three months later or six months later. And that's what caught me the most and starting to understand that um, life's not about money. Life's not about what you have. Life's not about material because you can't bring your family back once they're gone. So that's what changed me a lot in, in the philosophy of thinking about things. Um so I, 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 I like to I like to help people out more than getting help. Even though sometimes you need help, you know what I mean, John? It, 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 it's it's um, I feel more fulfilled in, in trying to help people. Well, it's like they say it's better to give than it is to receive, right? Absolutely right. So this is a beautiful thing for you because if if you're successful and, and you're one of the new council uh, council men, council persons mm-hmm. in Poway, and then you have an opportunity to serve, an opportunity to help, an opportunity to listen to your community and guide the city with policies that you think are helpful. Absolutely right. I mean, is there something off the top of your head that you think, uh, I wish the city would do this and, and they're not doing it? I think the city, I think this is mentioned um, a lot during the forum. We have a generation of obviously kids that are between the ages of obviously from infant to 12, 13, 14 years old. If we don't give them a place to, to, to go and play and, and not be scared, um, what are they gonna do? They're gonna stay on their phone, they're gonna stay on their iPad. So, in my belief, I think it needs to be something that's interactive, not only with for for the kids, but for the parents to come in and, and be able to do things with the kids. Um, my kids love going to McDonald's, and they, they have a playground inside of McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. They, they you know, I tell they put the pat, I pat, and they'll spend a half an hour, forty five minutes in there. It's safe. It's secure. Yes. But how many times a week can you go to McDonald's where the same place? <laughs> Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Chick fil is another one. They love going there. But how many times a week can you sit there and, and, and have them play in the, the same playground? Um, Hillary Park, beautiful playground. But you go there, it's 60 deep. I mean, there's sometimes 40, 50 people, and you don't want to kick someone off a slide. You don't want to sit there and tell the person they can't be on, on a, uh, a swing. So it's very hard for especially a child to understand that they can't do that. And then they start crying when they're, when they're little like that. They start crying and says, well, why can't I go on a swing? So on and so forth. Um, and the same thing with Poway Lake. I've been to every single park as a father. I've been to and more parks than you know. And there's a lot of them I look at, and you know some of them are beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but um, some of them I, I just in awe that they haven't maintained. Um, you know they talk about the water situation. Um, they talk about not using dogs in certain parks, um, the fields. You know, I, I I grew up playing baseball, and that was one of my passions. And the field that they have now, it's it's I don't know if they just passed it on to the coaches and and the the leagues, but um, in the old days, Poway used to get involved in that. You know, they mm-hmm. used to have, they, they used to have a shed and and say, okay, here you go, here's a budget. Um, what happened to that? Well, that still exists. I, I mean. 
you know, my kids played softball and little league and the leagues themselves do a great job keeping up their oh, fields. D- don't get me wrong. But, but, the, but it's, um, the city fields are different. So like, for example, Poway National has the fields on Pomerado Road mm-hmm. next to the Pomerado School. Right. Those are incredible fields. And who takes care of them? The league pays for it. Um, it's school district property. Um, and the league spends money with professional groundskeepers. They used to use, what was his name? I think it was Luke Yoder, who uh-huh. was the groundskeeper at Petco. Uh-huh. I think there's a different crew that does right, it. Right. And then Poway American did the same thing at um, Tierra Bonita. Tierra Bonita. And then for the girls at Aubrey Park, the, right. those are professionally groomed right. and laser leveled. And right. Oh, yeah. They, but, but then you get away from that. And like, let's say you go to uh, Valverde Park or you go to Star Ridge. Um, there's a big drop off in the quality of the facility. Even even the park at community the community center part. Oh yeah, the, those two baseball fields are. They, uh, when it rains, it's like I, the I Grand don't want, I don't want to use. They, they look like, and then I'm gonna say this, and maybe it's the wrong way to say it, but this is me. They look like crap. They they do. And and to me, if you're a community member, you should have the right to be upset. Yeah. And if you're a leader. You're not paying attention to what the community wants. Well, it's interesting what the community wants. I, I, I happen to serve on the city's park and rec committee. Okay. And so, um, you know, in those meetings, we talk a bit about the fields. And, and I've even proposed ideas to, to renovate the fields and make them tournament quality fields so we could attract people to Poway and make it a economic development opportunity. So more people are coming to our restaurants and, and uh, you know, staying in our have, hotels. Having tournaments. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, when we had, when I was involved in the Ranch Bernardo restaurant, there used to be tournaments on Saturdays where they have softball tournaments or yeah. water ball. And they used to bring thousands of people all the way from Los Angeles, yes. Las Vegas, yes. whatever it may be. Yeah. But that was something that they had where they, they funded and they sat there and organized and it was well organized and people came down and they enjoyed it. Um, one of the things I was telling you about the bocce ball courts that you know my father had built mm-hmm. in the beginning that was being done. We were sitting, they, they were having tournaments there, they were doing, but then it got political. You know, the city wanted uh, two million dollars liability. Then the yeah, city wanted, yeah. you know, you, you can't, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, now, you know, for the average person in a club, it's not like they have thousands and thousands of dollars to sit there and 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 shell out for all the the rules and regulations that the city want. Maybe help them out. Maybe get to a point where you know they can get to that point where they could sit there and have uh, a, a liability insurance, maybe lower the liability insurance. So, you know, and I understand they need to have, be protected. Um, but there, there are definitely things that the city can do to improve that. Very much so. But the, I'll tell you this, the Parks and Rec commu- uh, Committee are, are, are I mean, they, they have, a, a, there's a team of people in the city that maintain the parks and they're mowing the lawns mm-hmm. and all that. but. The, the, the primary focus right now is the Cafania Center, you know, rebuilding the senior center, um, the pool that's being renovated. It's got had some delays and, and- Delays. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, the, right in the middle of a screaming hot summer. I, I, John, that was, that was when, I, when I heard that, I shook my head and, and, and I was talking to someone that, that's pretty up there and, and he says, yeah, they did. I said, you gotta be kidding me. And, and I, because my dad uses that pool, obviously being having stroke victim, he likes to go to the pool. It's easier for, for um, helping out and, and his exercise. And my kids have used it. And I said, they renovated it during summertime. Now, I don't know if it was started off, obviously, no. in, in April or, or... It was supposed to be done in June. June. That's what I heard. I heard it was okay. supposed to be done by the and end they, of the May. And they, and, and they were going to bring in the lifeguards and begin training them. And then I think it was going to be open to the general public in early July. Okay. So if it had gone according to plan, it would have probably been okay. Okay. Um, as far as, you know, meeting the needs of the community during the hot months. But well, it, but it we had problems. But... but but John, again, the hot months start in May. Yeah, they do. You know, we're, <laughs> they not, do. we're not, you're we're right. not, you know what? We're not back East. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. You're <laughs> they, right. They start in May and sometimes even in April. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, so I'll give them, I'll give them 
All right, May, June, yeah. July, August. But what I don't understand, and I've got a lot of people that friends that are in construction and government construction where they go and bid on jobs. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that this job was bid on. It was, it was yeah. Correct. Now, I don't know who bid, and I, I guess obviously they didn't know two plus two is four rather than eight. Um, I, that over budget that they've spent and they're still spending, where do they continue to think that, that we're going to get this? The, the only place, that, you know, they talk about having some surplus in, in, in their budget, their, their general fund, but all they're doing is taking money from one area and putting it in the other area, spending that, and then when they get some of that money back, they're putting it back in that. It, that so they're basically just kind of circling the money around. Right. And the other alternative is think about how much money, and I think I mentioned this in, in the, the forum, is that how much money, and it may be just a dollar a person that's going in there during the summertime, how much revenue did we lose? Was it $1,000 a month? Was it two? I don't have, obviously, the numbers in front of me because they I haven't been provided, but we have to go by the past and see how many people have used that pool from, let's just say, June to August and figure out how much money we actually did lose in revenues yes. for the city. Yeah, and I'm sure they've. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can get dig in and calculate it. There's oh, people, sure, that's all I'm, they do, the I'm bean sure, counters. Yeah. It's interesting, though, that... If you look at the swimming pool, let's just assume it's a business that has its revenue and expenses, it, it loses money, right? It, because what happens is, is people pay to use it and the city subsidizes it, you know, and, and then together that covers the expense. Okay. But what happens with a swimming pool like that, it attracts people, especially when you have a top, top notch swimming pool, it attracts people from other areas to sit there and come down and swim. We have a, yeah. we have a beautiful park that needs a little bit of, of more manicuring and taking care of the tennis courts, the, you know, the, the swing sets and stuff like that, you know, obviously upgraded. Um, and I know it takes money. One of my biggest issues with the swimming pool is this, is when I was talking to one of my buddies that's in construction, he says, when we bid a job, we bid a job, let's say, for example, it's $900,000. We have X amount of time to get that job done. Could be six months, nine months, whatever it is that's in the bid. And usually there's a clause that if you have a leeway of, of two weeks or three weeks after that job is actually supposed to be done. If it's not done in that period of time, he has to sit there and pay back X amount of money per day that it's not done. Yeah. I don't understand when the city negotiated this with the person that gave the bid that they didn't put a clause in there to make sure to cover them. And I, should, I was gonna use a different word, but to cover them and to cover the people for the extra money that, that we're spending because we're over 50, 60% budget right now. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it's it's not like we're $10,000, $20,000, John. It's, it's a big, big, big chunk of change. It should be that way. I mean, because just to protect the taxpayer's interest. Very much so. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know the, the particulars of the deal. I, I know um, uh, I know that, yeah, it's obviously gone over budget uh, in, in terms of calendar time. And I'm obviously with cost. I don't know how the numbers shake out. But it is, it's an interesting issue that the pool was desperately needed to be redone. Desperately. Yeah. It's probably I mean, the original the, pool that, that's been there since I've been here. And the equipment is like, was like Old. rusted. And the, I mean, it was just a disaster. Right. So um, I remember they got to a point where they, they had to move forward and fix mm -hmm. it. And I don't know if that had an impact on the schedule. It probably did. I, I don't mind so much on a scheduling if it was only a month. What I mind is a, you closed it during the summertime. B, we lost revenue. C, the contractor, is he just gonna, he bid nine, I think it was 900,000, close to it around there. I just heard numbers. Is he only gonna get paid 900,000? I don't know. Yeah. Because if I was a contractor and I had no clause in there, I'd, I'd want to get paid well, for. Go to go to City Hall and get a copy of the contract. I'm, I'm gonna do that. I, you, know? I um, you know, again, I have it. My thing is, is and I look at it this way, John, is that you can't fix something that's already been, it's like, you know, spilt milk. Yeah. You, you can't. 
So mm-hmm. it's done. Right. The we can, horse we can, is out we, of the yeah, barn. Yeah, we can, we can scream and, and yell and, and say what they did wrong and go in front of the city council. Why did you spend this much money? And But it's done. What we need to do is fix it so it's not going to be done again. Agreed. Well, but I think it would be helpful. I mean, this just is my opinion. Right. If, if you're running as a candidate, it'd be helpful to, just to learn more. You know, there's a new Parks and Rec or Community Services uh, director. Um, get a copy of the contract. Find out. You, you, you'd be able to speak with a lot more authority on this. Uh, I know a little bit, but not enough. Right. Um, I would assume that there is some kind of penalty by going over the deadline, but I don't know the reasons why it was extended. So, I, I, um, I um, again, I've talked to certain certain people that are that are higher up. Um, <laughs> the contract was done. <laughs> you know, they they obviously bid they want it um you know it, it's uh you scratch my back i scratch your back sure i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go any further okay um it's done okay now we need to change it right i'm sure we're gonna have a beautiful pool and i think down the line when people come in and see how beautiful it is it may be out of sight out of mind that we mm-hmm. spent that kind of money um i'm sure there's gonna be people in Poway that are still gonna be upset which they have right, they have a, a right to mm-hmm. to be upset. They spent almost you know double. I think it was seventy percent more than than uh, than they should have. And there was a point made that I that I had read that you know the city crawls bad. City Encinitas did the same thing, and they spent seven hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand to get it all done, and they took care of it. You know what is the difference between this contractor and that contractor? I mean. Uh, I used to tell people when they built restaurants and said I spent seven hundred thousand. I used to look at them and say, like, "You got to be kidding!" So would you put gold? Right. <laughs> I mean, that's because I mean, think about how much it takes you to recuperate that kind of money. A tons, a long time. Same, yeah. same thing as, as the cities. How long will it take to recuperate? And it probably will never no, happen because it's it's cash flow negative. Right. Right. So, but it's you know the so called you know investment for right. the common good. Right. Um, it, but yeah, it's it's you know they're not going to redo the pool for another you know twenty years. And hopefully. that's great. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't crack. <laughs> well, yeah. So the other things that the Parks and Rec Committee, I remember they were really hot on was uh, the whole this whole notion of the dogs, right? So they have the dog park, a community park, and everyone loves that. And then there were the folks that um, were near Silverset Park, and they like to have their dogs out there, but it wasn't a dog park. They and then they, they used to bring them into that softball field which by the way, wasn't really maintained that well. And the dogs would run around, but still that was a practice field for the girls softball. Right. Um, and they also, they also bring them down, don't, don't mean to interrupt, but they also bring it down uh, on the Valverde Park there. Yeah. Um, and I've been there numerous times, obviously, because I live right up the street. And um, not to say that I don't love animals and dogs, but when a dog's off a chain and you have a three-year-old, four-year-old, and a five, you know, six-year-old, yeah. you you don't know how dogs are gonna react. You know, they can be oh, the sweetest yeah, dogs in yeah. the world, but next thing you know, you have, they see a little kid, they get sit there. So, uh, you know, it, it's hard to sit there and tell someone, no, they can't sit there, but they're taking them off the leash. They're not, they don't have the control of their, their, their pet. Um, I believe that they, you know, they have a right to sit there and, and, and walk their dogs in, in the park. Um, I will say this, that in the area that I'm at, anytime I've seen someone have a dog and a dog goes, they clean it up. So that's a great thing. Um, but I've also seen different parks where they don't do that. So it's, it's, it, it's a tough situ- situation in that end. I always thought that a great idea would have been at Silver Set you know, when they play softball there, that is a really deep outfield fence. Uh-huh. And so you could put a shallow outfield fence um, and then it creates this extra sort of radius of an enclosed space that could be used um, for dogs. Um, but um, they never really wanted to pursue that. Uh, and I think um, the, the end result is, is the dog parks at Community and if you want to have a dog, you bring them there. Well, that and I was just going to say that to you. They they're saying, well, we have a dog park, we don't need another one right now, and it's not worth the, spending the money or whatever it may be. So, be it. 
Yeah. That's the end but of the story. A, that's a hot, hot issue for the people around Silverset because they were the ones that kept clamoring for it. They've been told no. They didn't take no for an answer and they kept coming. But I think they finally, as far as I know, I haven't heard them speak up much lately. But it's a fair, fair issue to bring I, up. I think it's a, it is a fair issue. I think, mm-hmm. you know, if they can have something that's theirs and they can sit there and, and utilize it for the best of, of, of having it for a dog park, why not? Really, why not? Why? I mean, you have land there. Like you said, you have extra land. It's, it's not being used. So, it, you know, what do you do? You put an extra little fence there and it's not, it's not that big of a deal. And I guarantee it's not going to cost as much as some of the other stuff that they, they paid for. But again, it comes down to the people that are on the council. If they want to do certain things, they will do it. Well, it's all a matter of priorities, right? I, 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 I'm not even going to go down that field. I, if you've got a group of people that worry about certain things, and again, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. We'll get it done. Don't worry. We'll sit there and have. So worry what we about need. what things? What are you talking about? Well, we're, ta- we're talking about you know, and I talked to the. I, I know the lady of the mortuary very, very well. The, the owner of the mortuary. On Poway Road. Poway Road. She personally has said that she's been, I shouldn't say harassed because I think that might be a, a little too harsh, but almost to the point where they are trying to force her to sell because obviously that road's going down there. Now, I think the other alternative is they're gonna to try to do the eminent domain deal thing on Neil. But here's a lady that's been there for X amount of years, probably before I even was here. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the right thing to do. You, you've got to work with, with the people, you know, maybe re- relocate her and, and, and tell her, here's what we're gonna do. We'll bring you in this area and, and upgrade your facility or upgrade the, the looks of it, and we'll be able to sit there and take that property and use it for the, the development that they want to use it for. Um, but I don't believe I don't believe in, in, in the bullying, and again, I should take that back. I don't believe in sitting there saying that you have to do something. Agreed, and so eminent domain is, is a hot button for a lot I, of people. And, I, I, and it, <laughs> in my opinion, it's, I don't believe in it. Personally, well, so but they have to figure out what they're going to do for the plan for the Poway Road, and hopefully they can negotiate a win-win outcome, right, with the mortuary and with the city. And I don't know what that ends up being, but um, f- applying pressure to get people to move or forcing them off their land for a market price, uh, I personally have an objection to that. And I and I do too. Um, I know people that are that are in the center where the church is. All the uh, thrift shops are. Um, good friend of mine, Jeff, that owns the hair zone, uh, he told me the other day that you know he got an eviction notice basically on, uh, until he got, he's there till the end of 2019. So those that's where all the thrift stores are, right? And I heard that they were being you know yeah, yeah. eviction and 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 here it's Jeff, a, it's the bowling alley too, isn't it? That the bowling alley, from what I understand, is is a, is a p- private piece of property. Mm-hmm. He's trying to negotiate his own way of, of building homes and doing certain things. Uh, and okay, well, so, yeah. Again, I, I don't know the, the, all it's the aspects land. of it. Yeah. Right. I don't yeah. know all the aspects of it yeah. because, I, you know, again, they they try to keep it under wrap until it actually comes out and about. Um, but I, I heard that he did go in front of the city council and, and offered uh, a certain plan of, you know, X amount of houses, so on and so forth, and the city had turned it down. I don't know if it's still in, in, in progress, um, negotiation, I don't know. Well, again, that, hopefully they can negotiate a win-win outcome. And, and that would ha- be ideal. Well, it, it, John, it has to be. Because right. are you going to have one brand new, beautiful building and then all the way down the street, you're going to sit there and still have an old uh, building. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, just to put it nicely, right? Right, right. You put yeah. it. Thank you. Because uh, yeah, I was going to use it there again. <laughs> and 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 you know all the thrift shops. Are, bless them. They need it for the church. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'm active St. Gabriel, St. Michael's. I you know being Catholic, but it make it fair. 
They have to make, they just got to work something out. Yeah, and make yeah. it fair. I mean, these guys. I mean, Jeff. He's been there uh, since I've known him. Twenty years at the place. Yeah. You know, he's got clientele that you wouldn't even know. He, you think I'm popular? He he knows half the city. <laughs> you know, maybe three yeah. quarters city. He's a musician, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. From Full Circle Band. Yeah, I've uh, seen yeah. him before. He's yeah. A, he's a very very good friend of mine. We've known each other for twenty plus years. And um, I used to be their roadie. I used to carry their their equipment. All right, I did yeah, sweet. So, um, you know, he was telling you know, you got till two thousand nineteen. You know, that's that's right around the corner. Yeah, it is. Now, where do you, you now? He, I'm sure because he, it's a hair salon, he could probably relocate somewhere. But you got other place now. The the, the uh, pawn shop, they're leaving. They've already. Like, they're gonna go here in the next couple of weeks. They've got a place down by Saber Springs, so that's one gone. Now, how are you gonna sit there and deal with all the the uh, uh, thrift shops? I don't know. Um, you know, there's a really good Mexican restaurant in there too. Yeah, El Com- El Comal. El Comal, El- yeah, yeah. El Comal. That's been there. That's been there since I've been here. Yeah. You know, and then uh, that's that's another thing. You know, how long? Uh, you know, they they obviously if they have an extended lease past 2019, there's money to be spent. Who's going to spend that? Is it get the city? They're going to buy it out and say, okay, we'll buy your lease out so you can go find a, another place. I mean, there's so many different factors um, that come into play. So, and, and the tough part is, is when you have been somewhere and, and you've set roots to take those roots off and go somewhere else, you're basically plan, planting another plant and you're hoping that, yeah. that, that it provides fruit. It's disruptive. Very um, much so. But it, 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 it might be disruptive to the point of damaging the business or creating a new opportunity. You don't know. Um, but... It seems the writing's on the wall that something's going to happen. It's it's a done. I mean, yeah. in my in my opinion, I think it's a done deal. Um, like I mentioned in one of my my statements, um, even in the corridor, and and I and I know the 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 owners of, of a certain pe- couple pieces of property. It's done. It, it's a great idea to a, to a point, but they have to sustain it. They have to bring people in to to slowly but surely to go to restaurants, to go to these places that, that they're going to sit there and put in. Um, and I'll give you a perfect example. When I had my restaurant, I had it for 12 years in Poway. I was one of the first guys that had a sports bar, you know, besides uh, Kam- um, uh, Kaminsky that had burnt down. And there really wasn't, and, and they had the uh, the old Irish pub. Right. But the old Irish pub, they were a younger crowd that went there. They they did their drinking. Mine was more a restaurant, um, you know, after hours than it was the drinking and playing pool. But when you move Poway itself, most people, when they, even though we're, we're a, a, a rich per capita, like I mentioned in, in the forum, most people, when they go out to dinner, they go outside of Poway. And and I've noticed that when I had my business in the beginning. Don't, don't come to your business, but they also go outside. And to keep the people in Poway, how do you do that? And my thing is, if you sit there and bring all these businesses here, and you don't have the people here to sustain it, what is going to happen? Mm-hmm. I mean, the big one of the things I had a conversation with with a couple landlords is that, you know, I think it's great they're going to bring these businesses because they're you know as long as they bring people in, it'll help us out. But if we can't bring the people in, what's going to happen with all those those you know empty spaces? They're going to get the concessions, and after the concessions are up, they're going to be empty, and now it's going to look like a ghost town. And and I don't want that to happen to Poway like that happened in in El Cajon. Uh, you know, I, I've been traveling around to kind of see different areas because obviously, you know, being a businessman, I wanted to sit there and see if there's areas that I can open up another business. Um, but it happened in El Cajon. They built it beautiful, be- new a police station, you know, community center, the whole deal. They had a beautiful corridor and probably 50% of the businesses are empty. Is that on Main Street? Main Street. Yeah, well, I guess that's where El Cajon Boulevard eventually correct, turns correct. into that. There's Starbucks there, and then there's the uh, yeah. Italian place. And Yeah, some of the buildings there are, yeah, it's quiet there. Very quiet. Yeah. 
But, you know, imagine if they built on Poway Road and they're talking about, you know, building, you know, apartments, condos, going to have like maybe, what, 3,000 people move in. So those people are going to have to go somewhere. They're, they're, hopefully they're going to be a surge of new opportunity for those businesses, plus for the existing Poway residents. Because I know a lot of people in Poway are always anxious to try new things. True. You know, but, True. but, but you're right. There's always going to be people that are going to go out or they're going to go to... You know, when, when I what I I guess my point maybe I, I didn't clarify it correctly. You bring in that corridor, and the corridor is the only one that's coming in right now. That's the one that's being built. Do we have enough people right now to sustain mm-hmm. keeping the people that are renting that corridor until we continue to go down the line and build and bring the homes? For the people that want to sit there and come and live in so Poway. So during this period of transition. Thank you. Okay. That's, so That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, that, that could be, things could go sideways for some people there. A perfect example right now, the housing market, you know, they're doing great. If the housing market starts to turn, what's going to happen? You think people are going to sit there and continue to buy homes at, at eight, nine hundred thousand, a million dollars? No. They And if they could afford it and the housing market goes down to six hundred, they might be able to do it. But that means the interest rates are going to be higher and, and the payments are going to be, you know, it, it, it all comes down to excess money. Mm-hmm. If you have the excess money, you'll be able to go out and enjoy yourself. If you don't, they're not able to do so. Well, I think with housing... There, there's such demand for housing that, and especially for, I'm not going to say, it's funny, affordable housing. Dave Grush said this, affordable housing or housing that's affordable. There's a, such a demand for both, especially here in Poway. And so I've always thought that if they build condos and apartments, they should fill up pretty quick, even if the economy slowed down. Um, but, you know, it's going to create a whole other set of issues. John, let, let me ask you this. Hillary Park, mm-hmm. uh, Hillary Lane, I should say, um, one of the older sections of, of town for apartments. Air conditions in the window, one, two bedrooms. What do you think the rent goes there for two, two bedrooms a, mo- a month? I've never priced it, but I'm going to say close to two thousand a month. About sixteen to eighteen hundred. Mm-hmm. That's thirty years old. Now you bring these new condos. Are you able to spend twenty eight, twenty nine, three thousand dollars a month for a condo? Now you may be buying them. Different story. You know, instead of spending $3,000 a month, you might be able to get a mortgage, but I don't know if that's what they're planning on doing. If they're building these condos for sale or are they building these condos for having people to collect rent? You know, that that's two different things. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, don't. And, and from what I understand, they're doing it for collect rent. And if I was a landlord, I'd probably do it that way too because it's, it's a continuous income. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a hard... It's a hard line to cross because you want to help people and you want people to stay in Poway. I think they're able to sustain it if they are able to sit there and bring him slowly but surely in here. If we overdo it all at one time, you're going to you're going to get the the supply higher than the demand. Um, you're absolutely right about people wanting to sit there and, 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 and live. We don't have homes. I think we're, we're going to be the next Los Angeles to be with, you know, drive down the, that freeway at, at one o'clock in the afternoon. And never mind Poway Road. So people want to come live here. But are they going to willing to spend that kind of money that Los Angeles, San Francisco and so on and so forth? Do we have the jobs that can sustain that? Um, I know biotech. Um, that was one of my fortes when I was doing investment. If we can get more biotech companies down here, they make money. Um, they're able to sit there and, and come down to uh, and afford homes and, and, and condos. But we have to do it slowly, period. Yeah, and I think a number of the other candidates brought that up. They, they felt, you know, not a surge, not a, 
a dramatic rattling of the cage, just a slow ramp. And I don't know what the time frame is for the uh, this project. Do you know? Uh, I've heard again. I haven't a hundred percent. I've heard anywhere from ten to twenty years. Now, <laughs> if I have to wait fifteen years to sit there and get Poway Road all done, w- what's happening? Y- y- you know what I mean? I, I don't think they're gonna. I think it's going to be a lot shorter because bottom line is these, these landlords and these developers want to get in there before something happens. Right. Um, makes sense. Um, building a community is not one, two, three. It's, you know, even the communities that were built in, in, in Mira Mesa, you know, you've seen those big brown Oh yeah, building. Those huge they, apartments. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, what are they, 5,000 people in each each apartment? I, I don't know. I, I was shocked. It's unbelievable. Five story. I was like, yeah. And then I kept on saying to myself, I said, how did he st- sustain this? And they're all pretty much rented. Now, that's one reason why I think Poway could sustain it, but they, they did it in short phases. They didn't sit there and do them all three at one time. They did phase one, rented it out, got some money, did phase two, you know, built a parking garage. They, they did that in phases. And I think that's what helped them out. And it also helped the, the, the corridor that they have over there with, with the, uh, the Spanish restaurant and Panera and the movie theater. <clears throat> but they now are in, in a predicament where the roads, <laughs> that's another road that you can't travel from Mira, Mira Mesa Boulevard down to Sorrento Valley. Oh, it, that can be brutal. That. Brutal is not the word. That's 45 minutes. Yeah. It, it, that's 45 yeah. minutes you get stuck. And then there's lights after lights after lights after lights. Right. So I know we kind of got off track with that with there, but that's kind of the, the idea where I think Poway kind of needs to do it in phases, bring the people in, sustain what we have. Um, there's other areas that I think need to be remodeled or redone. Like and where? one of the examples is the Vons Center. Um, I think it's a shame that, that you have a, uh, Coco's, an old Coco's there that's been uh, not rented for what, two and a half, three years, maybe a little bit more. Um, Weren't it, they turning that into a Chick-fil-A? I mean, well, the, the city didn't want it. From what I understand, the city didn't want it. The city didn't want to drive through. Again, I, 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 you know, I, I hear that's, when I got into the race, you know, I heard certain things and then you kind of, you know, one ear went out the other year beforehand, you know, six months beforehand, you know, and then you go to Chick-fil-A and there was a, there was a, uh, a, uh, a ballot of saying, asking, you know, people to write their names and numbers saying, yeah, you know, we want one in Poway. But uh, from what I understand, and I may be 100% wrong, don't quote me on this, is that the city didn't want to have a Chick-fil-A there because they didn't want to have a drive through that went through in, 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 in certain spots. Um, to me, that's revenue. A hell of a lot, a lot of revenue because those guys, they bring, <laughs> every time I go to one of them, they're packed. Mm-hmm. And and if you live in Poway, why have to go tra- travel to Carmel Mountain right. when you got one in your back door? And it, it, it gives the people somewhere to go and have the kids play. Um, so that would be a nice addition. Um, you know, the Vons, the, the whole shopping center there, it's, it's an old shopping center. It is old, yeah. Um, do you revamp it by, by just putting a facelift on it? Well, it's a good question because is, is the Poway Road redevelopment from Community Road to Carriage or is it from Midland Road to Carriage? I heard it was from Garden Road. From Garden Road? From to- Garden Road to uh, Oak Knoll. To Oak, I mean, so it's pretty much the whole thing. Right. Now, again, I've also heard that from Garden Road area, there's certain Garden Road areas um, that they, they want to build on. I don't think they're going to try to sit there and, and, and deviate and have certain businesses kicked out. Well, there's a lot of newer, I mean, those are some new there, dealerships there. Right, those yeah. dealerships, I mean, and they and they control, I mean, all due respect, I mean, one of my best buddies used to be a dealer there at GMC, and... They bring in a lot of revenue. <laughs> Their tax dollars are, yeah. are, are big time. Sales tax is huge. Very huge, very yeah. huge. Yeah. You know, when we had the downturn, you know, the city actually cut down their sal- 
because they had to sit there and find a way to help the dealers without going out of business. So they, they slashed the tax revenue. And when things got better, they went back up. And, and right now, they're in a boom. I mean, they're selling cars left and right. Every car they sell, they get X amount of money. Right. Mm -hmm. Goes in a till. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're going to they're gonna play along with any of those guys. Um, do I think the, the hotel might be revamped maybe they'll make it into like a an old poway style hotel um again that's all up in the air i haven't heard um you can't take all those guys that are the mechanics and down that area i mean to take that away where are you going to bring them yeah I, again i i would i know the 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 commission that did the study and they i'm certain they have a plan i haven't read it right. i don't understand right. the detail to right. it but a lot of these questions that we're kind of lobbing out there, I, I, my guess is they have answers to a lot of this. The question is, of course, is is this something that should be kind of centrally planned by the city, or should it be something that the city sort of just lightly guides it, but the property owners can make the appropriate decision? You, to me, in my opinion, the decisions need to come from the people. I don't, if I lived where there was a car dealership in front of me and I had to hear the intercom every day, I wouldn't be too happy. Now it has, there's car dealerships that, that there's, you know, homes in the area, so mm -hmm. I have no, you know, but that was a big dilemma back in, in the day when those car dealerships got built. But again, it passed. Why? I, you know, back to what I said before. You know, there are certain people that have the money in certain, you know, situations. They're going to sit there and, and, and beat you out. Um, taking away the, the small businesses. You know, we've all, all heard that small businesses are the ones that sit there and, and make the state, United States. I mean, right, it, yeah. bring, it, brings, it mm -hmm. brings more than anything else. Um, Walmart, packed. Um, you can never get a, a parking spot in, in going down to where the DMV. Um, you know, so there's there's different things that I think that we need to work on. If we want to bring more people into the city, we have to fix the other problems that are that are here. They be, may be minor, but they also may be, some of them are major. And, you know, I just brought up the DMV. If you start bringing, you know, 150 new homes and then all of a sudden each one of them's got everybody said they only got two cars that's the biggest farce there is <laughs> there's, there's right. you know you got the son the daughter so there's, it could be anywhere from three four cars in, in a family so they're you know going to the DMV the, where are they going to park these guys you know where are they going to sit there and, 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 and have it now obviously there's certain situations that they do um are they going to sit there and maybe talk to Walmart to get part of the parking? I don't know. But that's got to be worked on, too. Well, they, so I think what you're saying is, is that they just need to have a, a well-thought-out plan that is phased, that, isn't, that has a, a, a slow ramp that's still um, cognizant of the issues that the existing businesses are going to have to deal with during this transition, that existing property owners are treated fairly. Um, those are all reasonable points, all good stuff. I'll, I'll give you an example, and I know I'm kind of going on, um, when they redid the, the center there where the, uh, the Irish pub was. Yeah. They, in my opinion, they tried to help the businesses that were around there by putting signs up saying that we were open, by making areas where people can get in and out. It was still very hard because you're on Poway Road, but that's the kind of things that, that we have to do. We have to help the people that are, that are there because you know you, you start building around certain businesses and it takes two, six, eight months, that business can go out of business that, that quick. Well, hopefully the landlord is, is participating in that help because keeping their tenants there and keeping them happy is important. Well, again, yeah. but, but if they're, they're having issues that are being done now, down the road and that's already finished and down the road there's there's construction and it's going to be eight ten months and it's going to be a lot harder to get into the mm -hmm. irish pub mm -hmm. what's going to happen there 
it, it they start losing business. They start losing <laughs> revenue. You yeah, know, so yeah. it, it's kind of one hand feeds the other. Where we. They have to talk about it. The council has to talk about how are we going to sit there sustain Poway Road. Mm-hmm. Poway Road right now, I don't. It, it doesn't matter if you just do the the corridor, or if you just bring Chickafill in. We have to figure out a way how to sit there and make that road bigger. We have to figure out a way how to make Espola Road going up to grade, which is probably one of the most dangerous roads we, we have. Um, the other day I went there and I was going to go down the back way. I turned around. I said, this is, I can't believe how many people. It's all the way almost past Poway High. Well, yeah. Well, you must have gone right around, you know, the time school was out, right? I, no, it was about 4 o'clock, 4.30 during, during uh, when, when people were going home. Well, people, so, you know, rush hour traffic, yeah. right? Wow. But, but you know, you're Poway Road. That's Poway Road going up to Spola. Yeah. You know, we, we did the, the uh, uh, Scripps Poway Parkway. You know, it, it, people go there, but there's still people going through the Spoiler Road. How do we kind of guide them, to, you know, give them incentive to go to the other road? And, and you know, if it's going to take you an hour and a half to go up the hill, that's a long time. Well, th- wasn't there a, a ballot measure maybe 10, 15 years ago about making that portion of a Spoiler Road wider? Um, I think b- between Twin Peaks and the high school. From what I... From Twin I'm Peaks, to remember from Twin Peaks from the high school or from Garden Road to uh, to uh, Twin Peaks. Okay, so I don't remember correctly. Um, I know the the city wanted to to make it wider in in a sense because of the schooling. It's just like right now with Poway High, they have that one lane going up until you actually hit Poway High. Right. Common sense, in my eyes when they were doing that construction that caused all those delays, you've spent money. You're gonna spend money anyways. Why don't you make that a two lane going all the way up to Poway High? It's gonna cost money, we know that. So but, two lanes in each direction. Right, and I, and in my opinion, and I may be 100% wrong, I think the people would have said, would have been more encouraged in that than just doing what they did and, and, and you know, one lane and, and just cleaning it up and, and and putting what they did and spending the money that they did. So it's kind of like you already got the, you already got Pandora's box open. Let's let's see what's in it, not just take one piece out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you're going to do it, then right. do it right. Just do, do the job right. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's the same in any kind of business. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do it, let's do it right. The first. My mom used to always say that you do it right the first time. You don't have to do it three, four times. And I don't have to sit there and tell you anything. But I think I think the, ang- the angle is, is that there were certain people, um, maybe the people that live there, maybe others, they just didn't want the traffic. You know, they didn't want to open it up to like semi trucks and everything else. But, but John... <laughs> I, I hear what, you. One I or two people, kind of one, yeah, right. one or two people, or even ten or twelve, it, you have to look at the whole community. Right. You know, if it takes you an hour and a half to go to school, who's getting the advantage here? Because the person that, that has the house, you know, now all of a sudden I'm looking behind <laughs> yeah. my thing, and I got an hour. I got a you know yeah. a, a road full of, of cars. You're right. I don't want that. Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> you know, it's it a mess. Is. It yeah. is. So and it's gotten. It's been. Lately, it's been a, a double mess, a triple mess. And it's going to get, if we, again, if we don't do the sustainable growth in a slower phase, it's going to get not double, not triple, quadruple. It's going to get six times the mess because cars have to go somewhere. They have to go to work. They have to, they have, and it, again, it's not one or two cars. They're going to school, the parking. Um, it, it's got to be where we can sit there and, and make the community a more, um, how do I say this, an area where, it can, where everything flows correctly, um, going from one point to another point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, an example is if we do bring all these people in and they have to go to school if they have kids, well, are we gonna build another school in that area? Um, to sustain that growth, because obviously it's not just a hundred thousand homes. You're talking about, you know, apartments and all that. So it's probably high going to be able to sustain that more, many more people. Mm-hmm. I know Rancho Bernardo right now is it's probably at the max. Um, 
they may be able to get some people. Uh, but again, it depends on where you live. And that all got to be part of the, the grand plan. Right. I know just generally speaking that censuses are down in Poway schools compared to maybe where they were, say, 10 years ago. Um, and it's the, the community is aging. The community, uh, I mean, speaking for myself, I'm a recent empty nester, <coughs> you know, so two, you know, a month ago, my youngest moved out. Yep. So I think there's a lot of families in town that are like that. Yeah. And so, the, you know, so the point is, I think there's certain schools that might have some capacity. Now, again, that's a big planning job by the school district, but it's got to be done in concert with what the city is doing. Right. But I'm what I was trying to point out is that most people that want to come live in Poway or even Rancho Bernardo, they're coming because of the fact Maybe you know because they're they're you know a single mom uh, father and, and mother that they have empty nesters, or in my opinion they're coming here for the school district. Well, yeah, a lot of I mean a lot of them so are. many do. You know, so I, let, I let's did. just say yeah, let's say one out of uh, one out of three, thirty percent. So now you're adding thirty percent more schooling, you know, for kids that that have to go to school, and you don't know if it's just one kid child, two child, three child. You don't know that, so. It's got to be something they have to think about um, when they're doing this project. And that's something that my, I myself, um, getting into council, that, that's, these are questions that need to be asked before we actually sit there and put the stamp of approval. And this is what you're hearing from people when you're talking oh, yeah. about oh, Everyone's I, I, kind of concerned. What's going on? Yeah, How we road? Yeah, what's yeah. it going to be? Uh, you know, pe people... Um, people don't like the fact that, that uh, uh, we're... The high school is that you know there's there's uh, you know an hour wait going down the hill up the hill yeah that's, um, that's those, a big yeah, topic yeah those people that are, that are living on that road they don't like that um, there's kids that that uh, and we all did it when we were younger they sped this that you know now they have the police officers you know so, but common sense too might think maybe we should put a a a, a police officer that's volunteer right now to get the traffic flowing quicker. Um, that's something that I thought about, you know, especially when I saw the first day that what was going on, I said, man, this is a mess. Yeah. And and then they tried, they fixed it up. Now, I don't know who made the mistake, but that's over and done, but that was obviously a mistake made by the city. Right, but they, they and they, they took ownership. That, yes, they yeah, did. I think it's Tina did. White said so in Facebook. She took ownership and, yeah. and she corrected the problem. Right, right. And, so and that's, that, that should have been, uh, you know, it happened. Mm -hmm. And like you said, she took ownership, fine. Now let's sit there and make sure, sure. we don't sit there and make that same mistake uh, in, in Ranch Bernard or, well, obviously we're, we're, we're not in the Ranch Bernard, but the Power Unified School District area. That's another thing too, John, is they have to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you one example. Um, I, I'm speaking in front of the PTA here soon. And I talked to the vice principal of the school that my, my daughter goes to. Chaparral. Chaparral, right. They have taken the funding away from the teachers that teach autistic kids. Mm -hmm. So there's no longer funding and the teachers that teach the autistic kids, and they're putting them in the general population classes. Right. When I heard that, I was upset. Sure. Not because of the kids that need help, because that they deserve an education just mm -hmm. like everybody else. Mm -hmm. What I was upset about is why would you sit there and put a child that needs help into a class that the teacher does not know how to do or handle that situation? There could be a point where that the child and we know that autism at times could, you know, the child could start screaming, throwing things, doing things, whatever it may be. And you're putting other kids at arm's way and they don't understand it. The kids don't understand it. They're still young. You see what I'm saying? And when I spoke to her, I said, there's got to be a way that, you know, somewhere, somehow in a budget or even with the city to work with them to help these kids out and bring the teachers back. It, it to me, you, you can't, 
I can't sell real estate if I don't have a real estate license and I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And, and that's a perfect example. You've got a first grade teacher that knows how to teach first grade, but if there's an issue with, with a child that has autism and has a, a episode, how is that teacher gonna sit there and handle it? They might may have gotten a, a course, a small course, but now they're spending more attention to that child than the kids that are, that right. are in it. So. Uh, that that was one of the points that you know I think I might bring up when when we have this at, at uh, the next forum. I know that's more of a, a school issue, um, but again, it it's, it works hand in hand. It really does. It works hand in hand. If we can't communicate with the city on what we need, even in our school, and the school can't communicate with the with the, the city what we need, well, why why we um you know that's why the school that's why the schooling in, in the district is starting to go down not up yeah well i think you know obviously it's a school district issue right but if you're a council person you're listening to the people you know you can hear these things and you can recommend you know solutions maybe with a partnership that we would have with the school district and i know that um you know some of the school board members and some of the city council members are trying to do a little bit of this i know mayor voss had that hotline you know for the uh the school shootings and and um, you know they're starting to see a little bit of this cooperation between the two. You have to, and you, and I think more of that is welcome. You have yeah. to. I mean, th- this is this is our city, and when when I mention that, I to me that's more of a personal level because of my kids that are going there, mm-hmm. and I think that if more families knew about that, there's, I think there's a lot of people that wouldn't mind donating or helping to get the teachers in there to help these kids. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, to me, if I could do something and I and I had, a, you know, more money than I needed, I would do it in a heartbeat. I'd sit there, you know what I mean? <laughs> of course, not, well, you already that, made that clear. But, but you know, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's my yeah. size. Like, you yes, know, these, you. These, these kids need help. Yeah. And and if you can't help them, who's gonna help them? Right. You know, are we gonna turn mm-hmm. turn our backs and, and, mm-hmm. and, and just let them, Go right. It's, it's not fair. And then again, it takes away from the actual teaching of the other kids mm-hmm. that are going there to get a education. That's a fair point. Absolutely yeah. fair point. Wow, it's um, it's going to be a, a, a tough road. And speaking think. of schools, you, you, tell me the schools you went to here in Poway. All of them. <laughs> All of them. Okay. <laughs> so. I started off uh, started off at at uh, Twin Peaks. Uh, what Ter- Terminina, Twin Peaks, or vice versa, um, Poway High. I graduated there in '89. I'd left. I went to Arizona. I went to Arizona State for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then uh, I obtained my uh, um, Series Six and Series uh, Six Three license to sell investments. Mm-hmm. Wor- worked for Charles Schwab for about uh, six years in the institutional side. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I sat and I missed, um, I missed my family, and I missed the the camaraderie that I had, and I decided to come back. It was uh, nineteen ninety nine. So when you were with Charles Schwab, was that in Phoenix? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I worked there. It was probably about uh, five years or so. Okay. Four and a half, five years, maybe more. It's nicer here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's really nice, but see, you know, yeah. they, they they had the the insight back then in Arizona, which was pretty much desert. Mm-hmm. They had the insight, say, hey, let's build a call center or let's bring, build an area where we can bring, you know, uh, investors, you know, via the phone. Obviously, that was how they did it, institutional and then average investor. And they went and did that. And, and and then when they did that, people started coming and, and moving in and living and they were building houses slowly but surely. Mm-hmm. You go to Arizona now, it's Oh yeah. It's what it was when I was there, completely different. Oh absolutely. It's just huge sprawl. Yeah. 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 So So then I moved back here in nineteen ninety nine mm-hmm. and I had a I just wanted, you know, I've always wanted to own a, a bar. So I had gotten a partner and um, we had our, our, our differences and then uh, we bought them out. And we, at that time we just had beer and beer and wine and uh, we were doing hamburgers and- This is a Harley's? Yeah. 
Okay. Beer and wine. And then uh, my mom had, excuse me, my mom had retired from the officer's club as a chef. And uh, I said, Mom, I got to do something to spruce up to bring people in. And she mentioned, uh, let's do Italian. Why not? I mean, that's what yeah. we're known for. Yeah. And um, people kept on saying, but, you know, oh, Harley, it's Irish, but it's so-and-so. And, and I said, well, it kind of gives you a name that you'll remember. Yeah, so how did you come up with that name? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that one. Yeah. So originally we had Harleys. Like after the motorcycle? Harleys, right. Okay, all right. So we're about three months into business, and we see, receive a letter from Harley Davidson. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Really? They did. Yep. They asked us to cease and desist the, uh, the name. And one of my buddies, old friend of mine, Bud Smith, he, uh, he worked for Heineken. He was a, uh, a distributor. And uh, he goes, Tony, why don't you just put an O in front of it and call O Harleys? And at least one time a year, you know you're going to. You're going to be busier than hell, right? <laughs> and I said, well, that's, yeah. that's a pretty good idea, yeah, right? That is a good I, idea. That's what we did. And then I don't know if you ever saw the logo. We had we had a, a big shamrock. Ch- yeah, shamrock, but it was also a big Italian guy in, on a bike in the back. Uh, okay, I don't remember yeah, that part yeah, of it. Oh, yeah. We still, I still have shirts, but it was a big Italian guy in the back on a bike, like you know, like a, yeah. like a Harley bike. Uh-huh. And then it says, um, it had, we're Italian, Italian, uh, Italian, uh, Italian flavor with Italian attitude. Nice. And um, my mom came in and, and God rest her soul, she she turned it around. I mean, she was one that had recipes. Every one of those recipes were true, authentic recipes that she had from Italy. And I still have those recipes in a safe. Oh, yeah. Those were legit. Legit I, recipes. Yeah. Not that recipes that you get from, no. you know, Bartoli or whatever no. it may be. And don't get me wrong. Those guys have, you know, have connections and they, they've been to Italy and all that. But these are recipes that my mom had from her mom and probably her grandmother um, to the point of making uh, biscottis, to the point of making bread. Oh, yeah. Um, pizza. The food uh, it, was fantastic. Yeah, I, I always enjoyed that. it. Thank yeah, you. Thank I really you. did. Yeah, I miss I miss the uh, the original one, and you never know. I mean, okay, because I, I went to the second one. It was right over by Rancho Bernardo uh-huh. High. Yeah, that's a tough spot location wise, isn't location it? Location wise, location wise was was tough. But I'm I'm going to give you an example. Of what are we talking about? Sustainable growth. Poway was a, a a great city. I grew from. I had a lot of friends that came in. And most of them were two, three time, you know, mm-hmm. customers that came in on regulars. But there was only a certain point, price point that you could go to that the people of Poway would spend. Okay. Well, you probably knew where that line was, right? right? It was, you know, that <laughs> somebody would not spend $8 on, on a Heineken or, and back then it wasn't, we didn't have all these microbreweries. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'll tell you a quick story. Stone came to me when I first opened up. And they had opened up in, in 2000 or 2001, I couldn't, can't remember. Mm-hmm. The owner came to me and had asked, hey, can I put a couple of my beers on? And I'm like, yeah, Heineken's some big, Newcastle. I said, here's the deal. If you give me the gargoyle, he had a big picture of plastic gargoyle. I said, if you give me that, I'll let you put two beers on. And from that day, we've been friends. And he still remembers, and you know how big Stone is now. Oh, yeah. And I gave him a shot. It was just, you know, hey, and he's... God bless him of what he's done. But my point going back to, to Rancho Bernardo is that it's a corridor of many places. You've got Rancho Bernardo. You've got Poway. You've got Carmel Mountain. You've got people that came from Escondido, people that came from Mira Mesa because mm-hmm. it was right off the freeway. I don't want to talk numbers about what I did and how I did sure. it. Um, but I'll tell you this. Without the hard alcohol, I didn't have hard alcohol at, at the uh, second location. I was doing more than went hard alcohol at the first location. Mm-hmm. And that could give you a sense of, of what the price point is. But now we had also had pizza in the second location. So right. that was a big drop. P- you know, mm-hmm. Our pizza, I'm not, you know, because it was me, but our pizza was probably one of the best that, around town. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I still get people on, on my, my page from O'Hara. say, when are you going to open up another one? We have a pizza, so on and so forth. But, you know, it's a hard business because, especially when minimum wage went up, it, it took 
a lot of the profits away, taxes have gone up, and then, I don't want to say this because we're going into the, the elections and all that, but you got you got landlords out there that don't look at the whole picture of the people. And when I say that, they only look at what I can bring in and what I'm going to get. And when I when I say that, uh, is that they continue to want to raise, 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 but there are certain point that it you can't do it. You know, a, a smart landlord would want to obviously maximize their value, but they would also want to have long term tenants. Com- completely agree, right? Because they don't want disruption; they want consistent revenue. So if they can work with the businesses, you know, to make the rent increases like work within the business model, then that would work for everybody. But see, a lot of times these landlords, and no disrespect, because I know a lot of landlords, a lot of guys that own property, and I know business is business. Um, and this is one thing that was, we were talking about, sustainable growth at, at the corridor. Mm-hmm. If you bring these businesses here, and we don't have the people to support it, and then all of a sudden we have all these businesses that opened up yeah. and their concessions are done a year, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. six months or whatever mm-hmm. it is, because I'm sure they're going to get pretty good concessions because they have to build it out, so mm-hmm. on and so forth. They might stay in business for a year, but if you start losing two, three, four thousand dollars 4000 a year or a month per se. Yeah. Well, you can only do that for so long. Right. You know know what? That's money that you earned. And And then. Right. And then what happens is, is the businesses are empty and the, the price of the location is not, and, and I, I will put money on this. The, 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 the price of the location is not going to be a dollar, dollar fifty a square foot. Price of location, even though it's on power, you're, you're going to be in the three and up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's because I've gone around Poway Road to sit there and see for myself in, in general to kind of open up another place. And, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, $4 a square foot plus triple net. Oh, some of the place, that's like, and, and I think they think they know they can get it because there's a lot of people that, that want to sit there and open up businesses, but they also know that this project is coming. So if the projects come in there, in their mind, they're saying, okay, we're going to get more people. Right. Why not sit, go in there and, and raise the, the rent and we're going to sit there and, and get these people in, in, in the business and they'll be already up and running. It, it's a tough business. Yeah. John, it's a tough business. You know, people think you make a lot of money. It's um, well, People have always said that owning a restaurant is one of the toughest things to do. So I tip a hat to you on thank that. Thank you. Thank you. It was tough. Um, had my ups and downs. Some more than downs and ups sometimes, you know. It's, but you know what? One thing that I have to say, and I look right in the camera, is that thank you, Poway. You guys made my my mom very very proud. Um, she loved each and one of everyone. You guys, every person that went in there, she loved. She never she never would would turn her back on anybody. She's so, a special woman. Yep. Yeah. I had her picture in, in the second restaurant. It was it was uh, six by six by. It was it was a pretty good sized picture, and mm-hmm. and people used to ask if that was my mom, and she thought, "Oh, that was your," you know, because it was a picture from Italy. Oh, so, okay. So they yeah. didn't really recognize it, and then I said, "Yeah, that was my mom," and and uh, without her, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have met, you know, even though I, I I was I'm from Poway and I have a lot of friends, but without her. Sitting down, you know, her sitting down with people, they wouldn't have known, hey, Tony's from O'Harley's or that's Tony's mom or whatever it may be. I've got my friends, but she also helped me out in, in introducing a lot of people oh, to yeah. me. Yeah. She was instrumental in making your business work, not just in the kitchen, but oh, you know, PR. But, yeah, the whole thing. PR. If, if my mom was alive today, she, even at her age, she'd want to come down and uh, just talk to people. She loved the fact when someone would come up to her and, um, smile and say thank you and she loved kids and we've seen kids that were two years old when they came in the restaurant literally to the point where they 12 years later they're 14 oh, so she's seen them grow yeah, up yeah that's special yeah very special so that was um 
I can't uh, I can't say I regret it. I, I, you know, I, I do it again, just maybe in a different way, a couple different ways. Well, and we all yeah. learn as we go. Yeah, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But uh, that's what makes life fun is that you move forward, you learn, you grow. Well, yeah. and and I I think that's one of the main reasons I was talking about the corridor and, and the things that are happening. It's going to happen. You know, like I said before, mm-hmm. you can't cry over spill, spill milk. Right. But let's work together to make it a better place. Let's mm-hmm. talk. Let's not just have one single group if they get voted back in and say, hey, they make all the decisions. It needs to be a unified council. Sure. Period. Right. And if I get voted in, I'm not getting, I, I don't want to be voted in because I want to sit there and be part of the, the clique. Because I don't need that. I'm my own person. Mm-hmm. I'm, I want to be voted in because I want the people and to hear the people of what they want. And I may make, make st- mistakes. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I'll be damned if they sit there and come to me and they call me up and say, Tony, I want to talk to you. I'm, I'm right there. Mm-hmm. That's, that's who I am, you know. And, you know, my, my old thing coming from back east is the handshake is a handshake. And, mm-hmm. you know. Communication with people is number one. What did you think about, um, you know, the whole uh, appointment process? <laughs> you're, for, gonna, you're gonna ask me that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting topic in town, and, and actually, the the, the it, woman it, it, was appointed as one of your opponents. She is. Um, The reason why I'm hesitating because I want I want to I want to say it politely and I don't want to sit there and and and, and hurt anybody's feelings because that's not me. Right. And I and I said this when I when I chose to run is that I'm not going to run a dirty campaign and I'm not going to sit there and 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 try to make people look bad or you know embarrassment and so on and so forth. What was done was a travesty in my opinion. You've got three months, maybe four months left on a councilman seat, by the way, which was a great councilman. Jim Cunningham. Jim Cunningham, yeah. Um, known him a long time. He helped me. He actually helped my dad with the bocce ball court when Cafania was in there. He, you know, he went a long ways. Um, but I truly believe that if that position was open, we didn't need to spend extra money, A, in salary, B, in, in, from what Mr. Voss said, well, we had, we hired uh, someone that was up and running. Mm-hmm. Well, up and running in which way? Up and running in, in, in Poway politics or up and running in the politics of working from her mom or Mr. Horn? Um, mm-hmm. So it, it, it's, that, that was a, a false statement in my opinion is that, she may have some background in this arena, but she didn't know anything about Poway in general. Mm-hmm. She didn't know that, that, you know, she might have heard about Stone Ridge. Um, she might have heard about the pool. But until she got into the office, she didn't really know all the factors. And I, and I truly believe she probably doesn't know all the factors still. I would have done it where I would have left it alone and had a open election like we're doing now, but instead of having her as a write-in incumbent, which is an advantage. Mm-hmm. It anybody, is. Anybody it's can a, say it's that's a big an advantage. advantage. Yeah. But I will say this. A true advantage is that my name is first on the ballot. <laughs> okay. I, all right. And, and that's, that's known. I've talked to you know, political guys, but, I, and, and besides that point is that she, Voss and the other three that voted, in my opinion, pretty much told Poway, we're going to do what we want, slapped Poway in the face and said, no, she's getting hired. And then, Obviously, that tape that came out where they had a little get together at the second bar, Wind Bar and Grill. And that's why I tell you, technology 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> can hurt you. Well, that's where the smartphones um, come oh, in handy, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, it can hurt you anyway. But yeah. You've got to watch who's watching and who's coming. Yeah. Yeah. But saying that and not giving the opportunity to people that sat there and, and actually filled out the applications, took the time, took the effort, and actually willing to take the spot to me was 100% wrong. It's, you're applying for a job and I'm applying for a job, but if somebody's already got that position, why am I applying for the job? Mm -hmm. To look good, to make the city think that I went through the process, to make the people think that I went through the process, to make the council think we went through the process. You know, look, we've got 19 applicants, you know, but those applicants, I, Again, I can't speak if they were even considered, but I highly doubt they were considered. Um, I still think, again, I'll go back that she shouldn't have been hired. She, it should have been an open election, like instead of what we have now where she's the incumbent. I think that hurt her in the long run. Um, and, I, and actually, I kind of feel sorry because I don't, I, I don't know what's the ins and outs but she's a mother. I don't think, you know, having all the backlash that she's gotten is 100% her fault. I think, a, you know, a majority of it is that she could have also said, hey, Mr. Boss, I want to wait um, till the election. Um, she's only here three months. <laughs> she, again... She she doesn't know Poway and have a fair election and then having Mr. Voss look at the people if they wanted to. And I'm going to go back again. It's a slap in, in the people's face. Um, he can say different. You know, that's well, his opinion. In the end, I think um, you're running. And I, I think that's you should be proud of that that you're running and actually um, gonna let the people decide. Yeah. Which is kind of what you're all about, yeah. right? Yeah, um, people's person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I'm, I mean, hey, if I don't, if I don't make it, mm -hmm. I gave it my 100% mm -hmm. and I did it because of me and not because of someone saying, hey, I'm gonna get you in there. And that is the consensus right now is that they're trying real hard to get her in there because they want to have a majority of their little group. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this, and because and, I'm out right now, doesn't bother me, you know, who I offend in, in the sense of, of, of the council. I truly think what would happen, what transpired, actually will hurt more Mr. Voss and the other councilmen, there, all, all the incumbents, then help. Hmm. And the reason why I say that, they actually have their little group, you know, in, in, in the Valverde area and all that. But the bo bottom line is the people heard about this and saw it and, and saw it on YouTube and read about it. And I guarantee you, before the election comes up, it'll be brought up a hundred times over. Um, and not by me personally, because it doesn't bother me. I'm going out and, and trying to get my, my supporters, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, but people are gonna sit there and, and, and communicate about this. Is This was something that, if he truly was a mayor of the people, he would have listened to us and he would have done it the way that a lot of people wanted, just leave the seat open. Mm -hmm. End of story. Mm -hmm. It's it's. It People feel very passionate on this issue, and mm -hmm. and I think the process that was used, you know, the timing of it, um, yeah, it's it's questionable. Um, but yeah, I, I spoke to Mayor Voss and I asked him, you know, what was his rationale, and he had said that it was about uh, you know getting someone on board that could ramp up quickly, that understood government affairs, that uh, didn't have to be a burden on the city staff. But to your point, she'd only lived here three months. Um, and what's the purpose of a city council person? Is it someone that's efficient at managing government or is it a person that's good at representing people? Absolutely uh, right. Um, and so 
this is an this is an interesting topic, and it's it's going to play out in this election season. John, I just got a quick question for you. You said you you mentioned that you spoke to uh, Mayor Voss. When Mr. Voss got voted in by the people, how much experience did he have in in, in running a, a a government? I mean, in a a business. Um, so that that question, that answer to me is is not not a true valid answer you, you, mm-hmm. do you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. is that you know you it's just like with me I may not have a hundred percent background in politics but common sense prevails right sure <laughs> common sense sure. like I said to you before two plus two is four it's not five mm-hmm. and and if you want to make it five you better find another one to put on there and and that's the whole thing is that you know he could use the fact that she was running and up and running this and that. But common sense didn't prevail when it came down to that decision. And um, again, I don't know the total ins and outs of, of the back side of it. All I know is that I've seen the tape. And I think that was a, a travesty saying something in front of the people when all the people that had applied for it and it was before the fact that the decision was supposed to be made. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, it's done. It's built milk, but it's milk that a lot of people <laughs> they're still they're still going to smell it when 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 it comes down to to uh, election time. Oh yeah, no question. Um, it'll be discussed. You know the the Green Valley Civic Association's having their debate forum. What is that? October October third, I believe it is. 3rd? Yeah. So I'm I'm sure it'll be brought up there as well. Um, so that'll be another great opportunity to see you out there, yep. and we'll see, um, you know, Miss Frank, and and we'll see um, your other opponent, Tori Powers. Uh-huh. So I know you're friendly with Tori, right? Tori, you know what? Tori's a wonderful person, a great girl. Yeah, a great girl. My thing is with, with Tori. I mean, obviously she's a Democrat. I'm a Republican. This is bipartisan in a sense. Yeah. Um, I, when I decided to run I called Tori right away and I said Tori I'm running and and she asked me you know can you reconsider and I said Tori I'm kind of passionate and said and but one thing I did man is that I'm not gonna belittle you <laughs> I'm uh, not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna you know that's yeah, that, yeah. yeah I said I'll have a clean campaign right on and that's it yeah you know um, everybody's got issues um, I just think that uh, the issue that facts should be part of what the city needs and not what, you know, if Tori's got two kids or four kids or three kids or, you know, who's married, not married. Do you, you, you see <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying, John? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like, you know, the other thing, too. You know, and I, before we, we finish up, let's wrap this up. You know, one of my biggest um, concerns in the area that I lived in or live in is... Um, the Stone, Stone Ridge Country Club. Yeah, that's a good topic. What do you think about that? <laughs> you know when I do that, what do you think? Um, I think the last election that they had in 2016, that would have passed accordingly if there wasn't certain things that were said and done two weeks or three weeks prior to the actual election. One of the things was they mentioned they were going to bring low-income homes in. Or for low-income people, I would sit there I thought and it say. was 55 and over, wasn't it? 55 and over, and they also had, they said they were going to bring some low-income okay. homes. Okay. From what I understand. I may be wrong on that, but okay. from what I understood. One of the the backlashes were bringing low income homes. We're going to make this a ghetto area where we're going to have people that you know can't afford this, can't afford that. You know they're coming in, but and it's not going to look right in the in the million dollar homes that we're building, so on and so forth. I, I think I mentioned this in in, in the last forum. I've driven around Poway, and there's a few low-income homes, one behind uh, Stater Brothers, and, and these homes look beautiful. 
Oh yeah, and, and the one, them, yeah. yeah, and the ones they're building now are going to be even more beautiful. Mm-hmm. They're not going to they're not going to put a, a sword thumb in an area where they have million dollar homes. They're not going to do it. Of course, the, the city council won't let it do it. Right. So I thought that was a a, a travesty by saying that was going to happen. Now the fifty five and up, what's wrong with having fifty five and up homes? There's a lot of elderly people out there that want to move to Poway, and I know for a fact, because I've seen a lot of elderly people in, in Ranch Bernardo, and now that's starting to turn up more into people coming in, in in our generation. But what is wrong with having 55 and up? These are our moms and dads. These are the ones that, that raised us. These are the ones that lived in Poway. These are the ones that that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. So bottom line is, I think that was another travesty saying, oh, 55 and up. You know, and even those homes would have looked beautiful. <laughs> well, it, it just seems to me that, you know, that there was a strong opposition, you know, to the redevelopment, you know, and for a lot of reasons that are rational in, in some people's minds. But then you kind of have to say, you know, be careful what you wish for. Because now you look at it and it's a little bit like a war zone. It's going fallow. They're yanking out the trees. Um, I think a lot of it was was an animosity towards the owner of the the owner, par- right. that property. And right. they just didn't like him. And right. they had heard what he did on Escondido Country right. Club. And right. um, I'm encouraged by what um, Kevin McNamara is, is, you know, he's trying to come up with a plan that's going to work. <sighs> So at least they're trying, you know, trying to make it, figure out a way to make it work. I won't say anything about Kevin because uh, he used to be one of my landlords. But I will say this. It all comes down to the dollar sign. Oh, yeah, always. Yeah. And as a developer, they want to come in and get the biggest bang for the buck. Or the biggest, you know, get the most money they can for, for what they got there. I don't like the idea that Stone Ridge was there 60 years. It was part of Poway. The original plan, okay, you you you, you don't like the, the owner. I mean, it's not like you're going to have to go and have a beer with the guy. You, <laughs> right. you know, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's what yeah. I used to tell people. Right. If you don't like me, you don't have to come into my restaurant. You don't have to sit there and, you know, you know you don't, we don't have to have a conversation. But the bottom line is that we want to make that the Stone Ridge part of the community that it was. If we go there now, it looks like the biggest eyesore that you've seen in Poway. <laughs> In, in years. Yeah, the chain link fence around right. it and everything. It's a mess. And, 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 and the neighbors around there, they're all pissed. Oh, yeah. And and I know that, that there's been a few um, ideas about subsidizing the water to sit there and, and make the yard look back, the backyard look better. But that's not what they want. They, they bought homes there on a golf course. Now, there might have been, you know, uh, certain clauses in, in when they bought it. Um, I don't know because I don't have the, the CC and the R's on that, but all I know is that what Kevin is is proposing is almost the same thing that was on the pa- paper earlier, except there's no golf course, there's more homes, um, there's a swimming tennis club, there's a racquetball club, uh, I believe there's a, a going to be a little miniature um club or, or like a bistro he was saying I, I, I don't know um, but he did absolutely say that there's going to be no low income housing that's in the paper that that's quoted by him um, will the people want it I, I, again I think a lot of those people that live in that area they've been there a long long time and one of the big things and main reason why they stayed in that area was because they had their backyard so beautiful. It was a golf course. Uh, unfortunately, they're not going to build a golf course again. Yeah, that, that stinks for them. I yeah, mean, they, yeah they, it does. Yeah, it, I mean, that's does. a key reason why people bought there. Well, yeah. What do you, I mean, and I'm surprised, again, I'm surprised that the, the, and maybe it has been, I just I haven't heard about it. I'm surprised there hasn't been lawsuits filed for the fact that what happened. 
Now, I may, may be 100% wrong that they can't do anything about it. I don't know. But all I know is this, is that if my property was worth $1.2 million when there was a golf course there, and now it's worth 800000 who's going to sit there and make up the difference? Mm-hmm. And it's not even just the property that was on the golf course. You're talking about the property behind the golf, you know, the people that were behind in front of the, the, the golf course were, you know, and then even the people behind in different areas there. You know, that area is pretty much an affluent area. Um, so having that golf cor- course c- gave it kind of that. Cachet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like RBN. It's yeah. like RBN. Yeah. You know, you go in there, those homes next to RBN, they're, they're worth a lot of money. And they're small little, th- but they're people, hey, RBN, well known. But people, for many people, that's a life goal is to live on a golf course. Yeah. 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 And I, I, a friend of mine um, has a, a home that's. I think it's on, on one of the holes on, mm-hmm. on the golf course. I can't remember which one. And he was upset about about it being developed. And he was saying, oh, yeah, this is going to get legal. It's going to get ugly. But then it ended up not being developed. Now we're in a different situation. So either way, I agree. It's a, it's I'm a surprised. lose-lose it's a situation. It, it definitely is. But in the end... It's got something's going to be done because the city is not going to leave leave that that piece of parcel. Oh yeah, looking at some at point, that. something right. will be done. Yeah, the city won't leave it. Uh, maybe a year, two, two years. I don't know. But there's there's a, a law that I know that we have in effect in Poway that a piece of land cannot be not maintained or 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 developed in a certain sense of of making the area look right. Now, if they may make it an open space, which I highly doubt. You know, unless the city comes up with a, a boatload of money. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I believe that it will be developed. Uh, I'm just hoping that it will be developed to the point where, again, the right way. And the people will have to vote because they'll have to change the zoning law. Right. That's the Prop FF thing. So, so yeah. let, me, let me ask you, John. I'm going to ask this question to you. What if it doesn't pass again? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. I mean, it will it just will be stuck in this purgatory, you know. But but again, there is a, a a bylaw that states the city can do something. So if the people of Poway do not vote that in, then I believe and and don't get, you know I may be wrong, but from what I've read that the and and heard from um, some representative from Mainstein is that they have to do something. The city of Poway has to do something, unlike the city of San Diego on Carmel Mountain, you know, right off the freeway. Mm-hmm. They can leave that empty for, for years. But the city of Poway will not allow that golf course to be maintained because I, I, I mean, <laughs> you look at it. Right now, it's only been, what, uh, uh, seven, eight months, you know, two years or whatever it is, and, and everything's dead. Then there was a fire, you know, Three weeks ago, you know, everything's just fishy. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what the end result of that's going to be, but it'll be a good one to watch. Um, it's tricky. It's a that's a tricky deal. I you know uh, even though um, I know Mac, Mr. McNamara, uh, I believe he purchased the rights or to to develop or to try to get the development or somehow something like or somewhere yeah. he's part of it with with the his LLC. He's trying to get guys to come in there and do the investment, and then if he has to. To June of 2020, um, basically to develop it, or it goes back to the owner. Um, I, he's a smart man. Don't get me wrong. I think he'll get the money to back him. I just think he has to t- tweak. You know what's going to happen to make the people happen. You know, happy. Um, and I hope it. I hope it really does, you know, make the people happy. But I think your your main thing is you're going to have a lot of issues on the people that were on the golf course, and they're going to have to subsidize that somehow or some way. It seems like whatever direction they pick, someone's going to be upset. Oh, guarantee, guarantee, <laughs> yeah. guarantee. So uh, it's a matter of managing through that. That's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Tony, what else you want to share during this podcast about your campaign, about you? Anything else you think is John, important? You know, the biggest thing is me as a person. I mentioned before it, it's it's for the people. It's, it's not for me. 
Um, I want to sit there and help the people get what they need. Sometimes it may not be attainable, but at least I, I'll try to be as honest as possible. Um, I, I, wanna, I want my kids to be proud of their dad, too, that I try to sit there and, and, and help. I like that. Make their, um, their life better. Yeah. And yeah. When, when I say help to make their life better, that, you know, better par- parks and, and better education, you know, John, the education you go in these classrooms they're still so outdated a year, a hundred years, the same way it was a hundred years ago. They sit in the, you know, but you <laughs> go, is. you go to the newer schools, they, they have different. So, you know, I want to be able to sit there and, and, and if I can work with the school district, I know it's a hard, hard level to, to get through, but you know, I want, I want my, my kids to be proud and sit there and, and when they go to high school, if they, you know, my dad had if I'm still around, hopefully I will. But my dad had something to do with, just like, you know, when my dad had something to do with the bocce ball court, and I did help out on that. So, it's something you go down there and you say, you know what? I had a hand in doing that. That's a legacy. Yeah. yeah. So in, in the end, um, it's it's about the people. You know, I'm not going to be swayed. I'm <laughs> the people that know me. I, I sometimes have a hard head and, 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 and stick my, you know, put my foot down and say, Hey, I don't believe in that. But, um, as long as we communicate and that's the number one thing you got to communicate amongst all the people that are on there, the committee or, or the council. Um, and then also communicate with the people that are working with you. Oh yeah. You know, you can't just sit there and, and, and come to a council meeting every other Tuesday and, and not talk or not know who's upstairs and and who's dealing with this and you gotta so, be a representative yeah, yeah. right you gotta be a representative yeah so. So a man of the people yeah all right yeah. so tony russo thank you very much You're very welcome john You're thank a you candidate for the at large position right mm-hmm. correct uh, for city council in poway and i wish you luck this election season and we'll see you on october 3rd at the Green Valley Civic Association Candidate Forum. Thank you, John. I appreciate you having me. Thanks a lot. Thanks, bud. Okay. Thank you.